and you thought you were going to get away with it, huh? Yeah, right, because when I did the fires <laughs> repot, I normally just take care of everything, clean up everything straight afterwards, but that was a seven-hour stint. So, <laughs> we have an additional orchid chore today, and I hope I am not biting off more than I can chew, because initially for this episode, what I wanted to do was start another rack on the south side so that I can put my summer blooming phalaenopsis over there for them to get the maximum light from the facade before the winter kicks in. Building strength for all the stress that is about to hit them. That was the plan for this episode. However, that fires repot really did me in. It was a seven hour undertaking and my table looks a mess. And yes, guess what? If I'm not biting off more than I can chew, you are going to be around for that cleanup as well. Seeing as your support during that mega repot kept me going, I am going to apply the same strategy <laughs> for the cleanup because it is going to be a long one. Don't worry, I'm not going to be here three hours. However, we are going to be cleaning up together. But first of all, these chores are all a little bit of a necessary evil or a good thing, depending on which angle you see it from. And for me, when you see blooms, well, it makes it all worthwhile. So in my blooming alley, what is going on today? Let me give you a little overview of what's in bloom. It is not a very busy place at the moment, but Dendrobium hibiki, bum, pride of place. Performer, performer, performer. Absolutely beautiful and well. It's almost as if nothing else needs to be in bloom, seeing as Hibiki is busy. To the left of that, I have Podangus dactyloteras. The first spike is going over after almost five weeks. Pretty impressive for such tiny little blooms. The third piece of my Lelia regentii has been in bloom for a while. The first bloom is going over, and when I say the third piece, I have three of them. One came and I divided it into two and that was the most poorly piece. So that's doing well. It bloomed for the first time. Then at the far corner, I have my Panarica Prismatocarpa blending in beautifully with my Tolumnia Golden Fire on the top right of your screen. These two are a match made in heaven if you like to combine your colors. Something that I try to do in my blooming alley if space permits and depending on light levels, of course. <laughs> Then off to the right, I do still have Pinkton Bronze Age. I never took those blooms off. She's working on a new leaf, so I'm thinking, okay, just leave them. Let them fall off on their own. Popcorn Haruri! Woohoo! Eonopsis Popcorn Haruri was so, so poorly through the spring of this year, 2022. My goodness, I thought I was going to lose the entire bottom part. Meanwhile, the bottom part is recovering and the top is strong enough for me to be able to let it bloom out, including a smaller growth that has a spike as well. I'm still a little bit doubtful whether I'm going to let that spike bloom out. We'll just have to wait and see, but one gorgeous spike, you can't imagine how pleased I am unless you're able to discern it through my voice. <laughs> And then, Phalaenopsis cornocervi, my orchid ninja orchid. You guys put a smile on my face and so does this one. This is Variety Chatela Day. I call her Lady Chatterley because she just has that cheeky little je ne sais quoi grin on her face. She's up to something. But all those buds that we didn't see in the bloom dedication have now opened up and she is giving me the best show I have ever seen, which gives me a lot of hope for this orchid that if my conditions during the winter will not be adequate for other novelty fowls, at least Lady Chatterley will always be around because I don't see her having struggled one iota through whatever I had put her through in spring. And there's a bud swelling on her third spike, so happy days. Above us is Stan the Man enjoying a lot of airflow, but he is growing seven new growths. He's very busy on the underside as well, so by next year, maybe we'll have some proper bloom spikes and none of this quetched business that we saw this year. But seven growths, and I'm loving the fact that I can just give this orchid water, water, water. I love watering my orchids, and it is a dangerous undertaking during the winter and spring months. But when it comes to Stan the Man, <laughs> hey, I can go gung-ho, so just really enjoying doing that. 
Behind me, I still have Dendrobium Saraula in bloom, with one more little cluster that I can see, so there are still some blooms to come. And another one we can't really see here, but is on the west side right now, getting plenty of shade, has been fertilized, etc., is my Vanda Rainbow Forest, with a whopping 14 spikes. In the shorts, I put 12, well, <laughs> pardon that mistake, it is 14 spikes. We are up five more spikes from last year 2021 what a beautiful fragrance i've got the honeysuckle permeating the west side it is amazing but not to be outdone with the van der chow Praia spike the two of them combined my goodness i've got that sugary candy blueberry kind of fragrance with the honeysuckle being on the west side at the moment is so much fun <laughs> What we're going to do now is just have a look at what's left in the blooming alley. I had Lelia Diana in bloom. I took some pictures. I was not convinced about the bloom this year. I have to get to know this orchid better. I feel as though the bloom is not what it is supposed to be. I could be wrong. That's why I never dedicated her. But one thing about this orchid, she responds fabulously to light training and that one new growth has worked its way back into the pot so <laughs> we are not in any hurry at this point in time to unpot her and reposition her but the bloom was beautiful to look at for me i love the colors i'm just not convinced about the shape and being a little bit iffy about that uh yeah i'm i'm hesitant to dedicate something i'm iffy about and wow, look at that, look at that. I did my rounds early this morning, but now standing here looking at my blooming alley, getting the full visual, I'm looking at the bottom shelf and I have Lelia Regina in bloom. This little one just snuck up on me. I've been watching the buds for a couple of weeks now. And this morning I just thought, you know what, buds, yeah, okay, moving on. <laughs> no, she's in bloom. Perfect, just in time to show you Lelia Regina, another one that I would call the Daisy of Orchids. And last but not least, my beautiful Dendrobium Antenatum, gracing me with lovely spikes and blooms and another very rich and delicious honeysuckle fragrance. I think that wraps it about up. I do have a spike coming on my Bretonia the orchid that I got from Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents. I have a spike also coming on my Peggy Ruth Carpenter. So, you know, there's things to come and I'm very excited to also say one of my all-time favorites is going to be back, has been sorely missed, and that is my Pro Catavola Golden Peacock is in spike again after almost 15 months of a no-show. Or, as I have been talking to myself in my head, I always told myself, my golden peacock is MIA. Right, enough of the jibber-jabber. We've got things to do. Let's head over to the east side and start the cleanup process before we get to the fun part, well, at least for me, and that is setting up a rack for the novelty fowls. Yikes! <laughs> All right, I think it's best I start with at least taking inside what I can take inside, and that would be my Lekka that is clean. We are going to need these pots for our next project. These can go into the shed. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, I still have to pick through some of these dead roots because there's good Lekka in here, so I'll do that in the kitchen. <laughs> Oh, goodness me, yeah. <clears throat> Let's get rid of this. Oh, very dirty water. We can water a pot on the patio with that. Very um, lecker all over the place. Look at how all this dried from everything from that repot. So that can go into the nasty lecker bucket. Ah, gross! Grossness, grossness. Oh, this bucket here has dirty lecker all the way up to here. <laughs> it's gonna take me hours, but don't worry, the powers of editing. Right, stop yapping. This has to go into the kitchen. We can water a pot with this. Okay, let's take these away. This can go in the kitchen. We need this. Oh, this can go in the kitchen. <laughs> and this, oh wait, you know what? I can clean this a little bit, save it, because Colmanara Masai Red 2023, you are up for it. 
those new growths are coming right up against the edge of the pot. So let's see if this is worth saving. Might as well give it a go. Mmm, yummy, <laughs> for a plant it is. Ta-da, all clean. That can all dry out for a bit and then I can put it away. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> everything over there, at least it moved a few feet closer to the kitchen. <laughs> but this is already making me feel so much better. Now let's get to the ground to work. <laughs> I'll be back as soon as I have something to report. <laughs> I'll see you in five hours. <laughs> Chugging along, chugging along. It's four hours later. This is looking fabulous. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. And look at all that clean stuff on the table. Should actually belong at its place, but I wanted to prove to you that I have been productive and been doing my chores. I even gave my blue rag a super duper clean. Yay. <laughs> yeah, I went to town. So all my containers are cleaned up, all nice and Ready to go for the next project. The only thing I did not do today, and that's why I live in Spain, because there's always mañana, is the lecker. Okay, it is clean. It is 99.9% .9 free of debris, but it has not been boiled yet. But, oh yeah, I went through that bucket and poured things out. And you can see as I agitate it, I still get little bits of debris but they will all be strained out once we get this to a boil. So at least we've gotten to this point. And then of course, mañana, I am going to be boiling and separating. Superb, at least we've gotten that done. It is 4 p.m. now. And look, you see the shade there? Deep south. Okay, I haven't been even using my umbrella for the past four weeks because the shade is protecting the young Graycombs that are behind that palm tree. This pot, there's two palm trees in there. They self-seeded two years ago. Isn't that amazing? Huh. So I figured, well, if you want to be here, you can stay. I'll take care of you. Yeah, but the young are in the back there, and I want to bring the summer bloomers down into that area because, let me tell you why. Even though my blooming alley is nice and bright, you wouldn't think that this is bad light for them. But what if I can give them even more light without burning their leaves? Of course, excluding Lady Chatterley because blooming alley, hey, hey, you're in bloom, you stay. But what if I can give them more light without burning their leaves? And that is where the deep south comes into effect and the shadow I just told you about. See that? That's cousin it right there. And there is the little rack on upside down pots. I want to extend that and add another rack. Fires has got to go. Still moving fires around every day, trying to be very mindful of the leaves. But that line of the shadow right there will only creep in as far as cousin it is, and the rest remains shady. And then I have the heat of the terracotta to boost even more warmth into the root system for as long as I can. And I have this right opposite that little line there against the hedge. Bright white facade with curtain. And the reflection is much, much stronger light than what you just saw in the blooming alley. So let's get to work, clean that up because woohoo, 4 p.m. I'm on schedule. I think I can get this done. Keeping my fingers crossed that this is going to work because A, today is not that windy of a day. So 
You can hear by my voice, I'm a little bit tentative about this idea. I think it's a great idea. The execution is fine. The orchids are stable. We'll have to see how they cope with any kind of swirling wind. And I shuffled them around a little bit more because Kimmy at the far end there gets a lot of misting. So it looks like I have an empty space there. However, I could probably put an orchid top there that doesn't mind getting a lot of mist on it. Let me see if I can get Renanthra Citrina into that little spot because she's doing this and I really would like to encourage them for as long as I can so they can get the humidity by the hedge is what I'm thinking residual mist from Kimmy which is actually Holcoglossum Kimberlianum speaking of which shall we have a look at the spikes and how they're forming I don't want to make this video too long but in case you're interested spot the spikes <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a game here. Orchid game, spot the spikes. They're right there. The two crooked, funky looking things right there. And there's another one up on the top, somewhere tucked up in here. But I'm not going to move the top part too much because that spike needs to develop on its own. I don't want to be snapping it. They all look a little bit, let's say, delicate in my books. So I'm just gonna let them grow and do their own thing and see what happens. But yeah, back to the little Phalaenopsis. I'm gonna have to be watching the dogs as well. They are not that interested in what goes on with the deep south where the Angracoids are, but they have never seen this before. So I'm gonna have to be very careful because these leaves are completely different. They lean over out of their pots. And I have never done this before with the summer bloomers ever. This is a first. So yeah, I'm a little bit apprehensive, but I will be needing that table that they could be standing on where they could benefit from the reflecting facade. But I'm gonna need that table for Rapiculus Lelius probably in about two weeks. We'll have to wait and see. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm glad I got this done today as well as cleaning everything up from the mega repot. So hey, if you've made it this far, I'd like to say thank you very, very much. Give the video a thumbs up or thumbs down. If you choose to give it a thumbs down, please let me know why. I'm always interested in hearing opinions as to why I got a thumbs down and then I can improve on whatever it is I can improve. And if I cannot, I will definitely give you a reason as to why I can't improve things, at least not at this point in time but I am going to take your opinion into consideration so that I can improve when I'm able to, if that makes sense. I appreciate your time. Thank you so very, very much for being here. I really hope that you have a beautiful day on one condition though, that you do please stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye.